In this video, I'll delve into the details of Apple's MagSafe charging standard, and specifically, I want to look into the uh, supposed 15 watt charging available on this, the iPhone 15. Now, I bought this phone like many people did because it includes uh, a USB C. A charge connector for the first for Apple iPhones and it also should do up to 15 watts of wireless charging on the Apple MagSafe charger. I'm coming to the iPhone 15 from this iPhone 8. One of the reasons I bought this iPhone 8 was it was the first iPhone to offer power delivery through the lightning port and also Qi charging through the back cover wirelessly. And so I was pretty excited to try out this new phone with wireless charging and to do so I bought a number of different uh, chargers from Amazon. One of them is the Apple official MagSafe charger. I also bought um, another brand, which is almost a copy of the Apple iPhone or Apple MagSafe charger, as well as a couple of these desktop stands that can charge a phone, as well as uh, AirPods and, and even a watch on this one. So when I plugged these in, I was uh, fairly underwhelmed for something that should be charging well over twice as fast as the iPhone 8. I didn't see the kind of charging that I expected, so I decided to look into it a little bit deeper. So I used a couple of different simple devices to measure actual charge that's going on. One is this, uh, this AC charge adapter. This will power, like it says, up to 200 watts worth of devices on USB-C and USB-A. Uh, the important part is uh, what's advertised on the back, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it offers USB-C power delivery at various different levels from uh, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts up to 5 amps. So that would be a 100 watt max uh, to any device, any single device that's plugged in. As you plug in more devices, of course, the power capabilities go down, but that doesn't matter so much for this test. And it also shows you exactly what um, voltage, current, and associated wattage you're getting for a, a given charging situation with the number of devices that are plugged in. To validate that this thing is really telling the truth, I'm also using this inline meter, and this will tell me, again, the voltage, current, and wattage uh, for the power that is traveling through it. So I'll switch this over to pass-through mode, so it's not triggering anything. I want the charger to actually trigger power delivery and do that negotiation with the actual charger, which is this guy, and, um, and come up with the, uh, the correct charge specification. So this is just a passive device in between that will just show uh, the power that's traveling through it. Let's get the iPhone 8 out of the way and go into charging this iPhone 15. Now the details of this, I've got it at, uh, you can see 9% charge. Um, I can come back to this later, but basically the charge rate varies based on the level of charge on the battery. And if you can't see that, you have to just try, trust me. It says it's at 9%. I've also got um, a meter here, excuse me, a thermometer just for measuring the temperature of the phone. And I'll show that now. Looks like we're at 71.4 degrees on the back of the phone. There is a variation I found in charge rate based on the temperature of the phone and the state of charge. So when it's, when it's completely dead and first plugged in, you'll see lower than uh, maximum charging. And when the phone uh, is closer to being fully charged, you'll also see a reduction in charging. So 10% seems to be a good place to test these things because maximum charging appears to be available uh, or possible. So let's start with the two desktop chargers. This one on the left, the white one, is the MyFigno 2-in-1 wireless charge stand. I like it because you can put AirPods on the back. Um, and it advertises wireless fast charger 15 watts. So let's try that one out. What I'm using is, of course, the, the devices I've already shown you as well as this additional USB-C cable, which will run from the inline meter to the device I'm charging. And this happens to be a Thunderbolt 4 capable cable. This is a very high quality cable from CalDigit um, that handles, um, uh, I believe, over 100 watt um, power delivery as well as Thunderbolt signals, Thunderbolt 4, 4 signals. So I'll plug this into the inline meter and then into this wireless charger. And because the inline meter does not do cable negotiation on purpose, I have to flip the cable. Okay, so now we have the, uh, the meter showing, and let's go ahead and put the phone on the charger and we'll see what happens. You might notice that it already switched to nine volts uh, charging before I put the phone on there, and that's because the wireless charger has negotiated the nine volt power delivery level with uh, the wall charger. Here's the, wa here's the watts, that's the thing to watch as the phone charges uh, the uh, the wattage actually ramps up. So it doesn't instantly go to a high level. It sort of slowly ramps up. 
And what I find is that on this charger, the uh, my Figno two-in-one magnetic charger, you never get you never quite get to 10 watts. It'll hover in the nine nine and a half watt range, and eventually that'll taper down to an even uh, slower uh, rate of charge. So this one unfortunately is not giving us the 15 watts I had hoped for. Let's switch over to the next one. This is the Gumash three-in-one charger which has, like I say, um, charging for the phone, as well as AirPods, as well as uh, a watch on the back. And this one um, also should be doing MagSafe charging. Um, somewhere it's specified at, uh, there we go, not five, excuse me, nine volts, 2.2 amps. And we'll see if that really is the case. So let's plug in this charger. And we see it's negotiated nine volts. And I'll put the phone on there, and we'll see the, uh, excuse me, we'll see the wattage ramp up here. We're up to, looks like eight, eight and a half watts, and that's where this one tends to max out. So it doesn't get uh, really into the nine watt range. Usually it'll just touch on it and then go back down pretty quickly to like eight and a half watts. So this one does not ramp up to 15 watts either. Next we'll use uh, a couple of these, I don't know what to call them other than round charge pucks, something like that. Let's start with this one. This one is made, um, this is a, you know, a third party brand that looks a lot like the Apple one, but it's actually made by a different brand. The model is CW120. And uh, what's nice about this one is you can buy a two pack uh, for about the cost of one of the Apple uh, official ones. But again, it's showing output power 15 watts max. So let's plug it into our meter. And we'll set the phone down. Oh, notice that it's already negotiated nine volt charging as well. None of these chargers use the power delivery 12 volt or 15 volt levels. They simply switch up to the, the first power delivery level, which is nine volts. Something I'm noticing here is that um, the, uh, the voltage is staying pretty, uh, pretty well regulated. We're still over nine volts, even though the wattage has gone up. And that's really more a function of the AC wall charger you've got. But I did happen to notice that it's not sagging much at all here. And we're up to, looks like just touching over nine watts. Doesn't really get into the nine watt territory for long. It just taps on nine watts and then kind of comes back down to eight and a half to nine and, and hovers in that area. So very similar to the desktop chargers that I just tested. Now, one thing I'll point out here is that the power level that you're reading here is the power traveling through here. That's not the same as the power that the phone is receiving because of course, with any wireless charging, there's uh, energy loss between the two magnetic coils that uh, create the charging circuit. So when I say nine watts, that's just the power that's traveling through the meter, not necessarily the, the wattage that the phone is seeing. Next, let's move on to the official Apple charger. So here's the, the Apple uh, charge puck. Um, this one is the one that you can read on their website. This is the one that should charge up to 15 watts. It's been out for a little while, uh, capable to with charging on previous iPhones as well. But as I understand it, the 15 is the first one that should go up to 15 watts. One thing that I will note that Apple says on their website is that you should plug this in first before uh, attaching the phone so that the charger can properly negotiate power delivery. And so I've done that as I've done in all of these tests. And as in other tests, we see that the voltage has been negotiated up to power delivery at the nine volt level. And as in other chargers, we're seeing the wattage gradually ramp up. The phone is still at, uh, well, we're at 8% now, actually. We've lost a little bit, but close to that 10% level that I wanted to charge at. And we'll, we'll see a little bit of charge uh, go into the battery pretty soon here. So first thing I can already point to is that we're over that nine watt threshold where things stalled out on the other chargers. Now we're getting into 11 watt territory, 12, 12 and a half, and it's continuing to ramp up. Oh, and here we are at 14, 15. We're surpassing 15 into 16, 17, 18 and a half, 18.7 watts. 
So 18.8 watts, uh, that's interesting. We of course understood from Apple that the charge rate was up to 15 watts on the new iPhone 15 with the MagSafe charger. But here's where I think it matters again uh, that the, the rate we're reading is the level of power that's traveling through the meter, not the level of power that's actually being delivered to the phone. So let's divide 18.8 watts by 15 watts. 18.8 divided by 15 is 1.25. In other words, the power traveling through this meter may be 25% higher than the actual power going to the phone. We don't actually know what the phone is charging at, but let's say that Apple is correct when they say up to 15 watts and that this phone is actually receiving 15 watts of power. The 25% difference can be uh, applied back to the readings that we were seeing on this meter for the other charges. So let's take the 9.5, let's say, let's be generous, and take 9.5 watts, which we observed on the other chargers, and divide that by 1.25, what that gives us is 7.6. And I think that's no accident. I think what's going on is that we were actually seeing 7.5 watts, which is a common Qi level charging standard. 7.5 watts is what we've seen on some of the faster Qi chargers for the last few years. And I believe what's going on is that actually a lot of these chargers that you buy that say MagSafe, they may have magnets and they may do wireless charging, but I believe, I believe it's actually just a Qi wireless charger with some magnets added to it. So I don't think these are actually charging at Apple's maximum uh, 15 watt charge rate that's possible for the new iPhone 15s. I think uh, in a pretty classic Apple move, you can get the new spec, but only using Apple hardware. So be advised that a lot of these chargers that you see online that say MagSafe likely are actually just Qi chargers with magnets added to them. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. 7.5 watts is not so bad for a wireless charger. And if you need the convenience of one of these on your desk or the, uh, the, you know, the economy of being able to buy two of these for the price of one Apple charger, it may still be a, you know, a good option for a lot of people. But if you're looking for the absolute max wireless charging you can get, it looks like at this point with my testing, you really need to use the Apple branded MagSafe charger and you need to run it off of a AC adapter or a DC-DC adapter, say if you're in your car, that can provide power delivery at the nine volt level and up to 2.2 amps or higher. The best way to probably get that is to look for a 20 watt charger. Just about any 20 watt charger you see or higher is going to offer the nine volt level at that amperage. Now, side note, lots of people run cases, and I'm no exception. I've got the Apple Clear case on this phone. So I'll go ahead and put that on the puck, and we'll see what difference it makes to charge through a case. You can see I'm back down at 10% to make the charging tests uh, consistent and fair. So the phone's at 10%. We're watching the, the uh, wattage ramp up on the meter here, still at 9 volts, just like we would expect. And the charge does get kind of hung at around 7, 7.5 watts. The max charge that we saw without the case was 18.8 watts on the meter. And here we've broken past the 7.7 .7 going up to 10 and onward. Let's see where it tops out. So there you go. Even with the interesting, we even see higher wattage than before. It looks like with Apple's clear case on, we're actually seeing an even higher wattage traveling through the meter. And that may be that the MagSafe uh, puck charger is asking for more current from the wall charger here so as to provide um, a true 15 watts to the phone. That's interesting that it may be actually doing some regulation there and uh, understanding some feedback from the phone as to uh, what, what level of current's traveling through it. That would be pretty cool. But we're seeing 19.3 watts here with the, uh, the Apple uh, branded case installed and uh, that tells me that we're still getting full charge speed or very close to it even with the case installed so that's good to know so there you have it if you're looking for the maximum speed that you can get through wireless charging using magsafe on the new iphone 15 right now you'd better stick to the iphone uh, official MagSafe charger, and hopefully eventually these third-party manufacturers that make so-called MagSafe chargers will move up to the same technology that Apple's including in their own charger and uh, not just add magnets onto the Qi wireless charging like they appear to be doing right now. 
If you've got any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. And if you're so inclined, hit that like button. But in any case, thanks for watching.